Ladies and gentlemen, today is an exciting day. We are going to be finishing our implementation of collision detection and we're going to finally see some stuff on our screen that resemble a platformer game. Um, and specifically our Super Mario Bros. platformer game. So this episode will be very exciting. Um, in this episode, we're going to be creating a couple more classes, one for our block object and one for our pipe object. If you're not familiar with Super Mario Bros, there's a bunch of blocks that you can jump on and there are pipes that you can either enter into or they're just there as objects on the map. And so we're going to be creating those classes and we're going to be applying or we're going to be implementing more collision detection code within our player class so that it can collide with the different objects that, we, that we're going to now have. And we'll have some test code in here as well just so that we can see some of the collision detection in action. So I'm super excited for this episode. I hope you guys are all excited. And with that, let's get right into it. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and open up our Super Mario Bros. folder, uh, game folder, and let's open up our source package folder and let's go to com.game.object and let's go ahead and right click this and do new class and let's go ahead and start with our block class. So let's do block, oops, block.java. And let's go ahead and finish that. And now we have our new block class. And in here, we want this to be a game object. So let's first start by extending the game object. And Let's go ahead and right. So let's go ahead and create a constructor for our block object. So let's go ahead and do public block, and let's do int x, int y, int width, int height, and int scale. And in here, let's go ahead and call our game object constructor by calling super and passing in our x and y and let's go ahead and pass in a game uh sorry an object id dot block and let's go ahead and import that object id uh, enum and let's go ahead and pass in width height and scale now if you've seen my other episodes, this constructor is very similar to the player constructor where we pass in our x and y coordinates and we pass in our width and height for our, our, our block in this case and a scale to scale the width and height. And all of those just get passed down into our game object constructor which we, we implemented in a previous episode. So if you haven't seen this or if you're not familiar with this go ahead and check that out or, or review that but that constructor um, has a very similar constructor to our block except that it also takes in an object ID dot block which if you remember we had four object IDs and let's go back just so that I can show that so in our com dot game dot object dot util we had an object ID Dot Java enum and in here we had four different object types and so we're going to pass in this block type here and um, let's go back to our block so that's where this is coming from and now let's go ahead and hover over this and add our unimplemented methods so remember game objects have to have a tick render and get bounds implementation and so let's go ahead and remove these auto-generated method stubs real quick and let's proceed to implement this. So let's start with our get bounds and 
the get bound is going to be used for our collision detection. So this is really what's important. So let's go ahead and do return new rectangle. And let's go ahead and pass in int get x. And remember get x is coming from our game object methods. So we're going to call get x and we're going to call get y and we're going to call get width and we're going to do get height. And we're going to pass that into a new rectangle that we create. So our bounding box for our block is going to be a rectangle. Now the reason why we need a cast here is because this rectangle constructor requires the values to be integers and this get x returns a float. So remember from our game object implementation, we went ahead and created these getters and you can see them here and those return floats. So that's why we're getting floats there. Okay. And let's go ahead and save this and that'll be it for our block implementation for now. Let's go ahead and right click the com.game.object package and click class. So let's go ahead and create a new class here and let's call it pipe.java. So this will be our pipe. Okay. And our pipe class is going to be very similar to our block, but with just a few more enhancements. So let's go ahead and start. Let's do a private Boolean interval. And this is going to be a Boolean that represents whether you can enter the pipe or not. Um, in Super Mario Bros, if you've played the game before, you might recall that you can enter some pipes. And there are other pipes that you can't enter into. And so that's what that Boolean will represent. We won't use it yet, but we'll just have it there for now. Um, and we'll use it in a later episode. So let's go ahead and create a constructor for our pipe class. And it's passed in very similar to our block class that we just created. Let's do in x, in y, in width, in height, in scale, and boolean enterable. Okay. And in here, let's go ahead and call super. So we want this to also be a game object. Let's go ahead and extend extends game object right? and let's go ahead and call that constructor for a game object by passing in x y and this time object id pipe and let's do width height and scale okay and let's go ahead and import this object id and let's go ahead and add our unimplemented methods from our game object so these are coming from a game object and let's go ahead and remove these auto generated stubs again. And let's go ahead and do a very similar thing where we do a return new rectangle angle. And let's do int get x, int get y int get width and int get height. Okay, so now that looks good. And we can go ahead and save that. And let's actually um, also do this. So let's do, let's set this enterable instance variable to the enterable value that we pass into our constructor. Um, and yeah, we won't use that yet, but we'll use it in a later episode. So that's our pipe in our block class. So we can, let's go ahead and remove some of these things that we're not using from here. Okay. And now let's go back to our player class and implement a function called collision um, that will handle all of our collision detection. So let's go ahead and do that. So in here, we want to do a private void collision. And in here, let's do a for loop. So let's do for 
int i is equal to zero and i is less than the number of handler objects uh the game objects in our handler and let's do size because it's a list and i plus plus so this is basically iterating through all of our game objects so in here let's go ahead and do game object temp is equal to handler dot get game objects objects dot get i okay so what this does is it gets the ith object um right so this is going to iterate through all the game objects and it's going to set the value i um to some index that can go into our our list of game objects and then now we're going to index into it um and this is going to return whatever game object that's in position i in our list and we're going to create a temporary reference to that so let's go to do that or now we have that and below here we want to do some logic now to <clears throat> do the actual collision detection so let's start by doing an if statement and if temp.getID is equal to object id dot block or temp dot get id is equal to object id dot pipe then let's do some collision detection right so um, later on we're gonna have other game objects like enemies that we don't want to um, or we, we might want to have a different collision detection algorithm for so this is going to be our way of handling collisions with blocks and pipes and the way we're going to do that is we're going to check our bounds for a player and see if it intersects with the bounds of these these objects so let's go ahead and do that so if get bounds dot and remember this is the the bottom bound for our object uh, our player object so intersects um and let's go ahead and do temp dot get bounds okay and let's go ahead and just fill out the rest of this these if statements first so if get bounds pop so if our top bound for a player intersects temp dot get bounds then we want to do something if our get bounds right intersects temp dot get bounds then we want to do something and if our get bounds <clears throat> left intersects temp dot get bounds then we want to do something okay and let's go ahead and start by implementing this first one so right so if 